Hey guys, what's going on? Here I am with Don Saladino. We uh, we just finished the workout. We're going on eight years together at this point. It's yeah. changed my life. Hey everyone, I'm Don Saladino and welcome to my house. I'm about to run you through one of my go-to chest workouts. Before we even get started on the workout, I'm gonna run everyone through a three movement mobility circuit. This workout's probably gonna take roughly about an hour. This is a great way to develop strength fibers, but also density in the muscle. And then after that, we're gonna go for that hypertrophic response. We're gonna try and build some good symmetry to that chest, good upper top shelf. And um, I don't know, I'm feeling pretty good about this today. Let's go. All right, starting in the 90-90 position, if you do not have access to a kettlebell, then just hold the 90-90 position for about 20 seconds. But what I'm taking is a horns down, and I'm gonna take that kettlebell, which is allowing that area of my hips to release. I'm gonna switch sides, three rounds. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our thoracic bridge, right? And we're getting into that down dog position. And from there, I'm gonna flip my dog over, drive my hips to the ceiling. Good thoracic rotation, allowing my glutes to activate by pushing my hips to the ceiling, which in turn is allowing my hip flexors to loosen. So we're gonna go to the other side. So I did three breaths on one side, taking roughly three breaths on the other side, and we're gonna go back and forth three times. Okay, we're gonna go to the third movement now. It's called the couch stretch. All you're really gonna need here is a, is a chair. We're gonna go into a half kneeling position. You know, you can use a pillow or some sort of a mat if your knee's uncomfortable. But we're gonna go overhead with our arms and I'm gonna tilt to one side for about three breaths. So we're gonna start out with an incline barbell press, five by five. Uh, fortunately, I have a barbell in my house. If a lot of you don't, you can go right to dumbbells. That's fine, it's a great variation. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into my incline pressing I am not gonna kill myself. The purpose of my two to three warm-up sets are just about getting that body prepped, ready for my heavier sets where I'm gonna try and hold a specific weight for five sets of five today with a good time under tension. All right, so grip on the incline press, it's definitely preference. It all has to do with arm length, et cetera. So what I wanna do is I wanna find a good position where at the bottom of that movement, I'm gonna be at about 90, 90 degrees. That looks about good there. So it's not always about grinding reps. It's not always about taking your sets to failure. I think that's the biggest misconception about getting stronger and putting muscle on. This first movement, it's about the reps looking crisp, the concentric being fast, obviously getting a good contraction and getting under some good weight. All right, the purpose of that, just to get the body prepared and primed, I do not want to burn myself out with doing too many reps because the objective of this first movement is to hold five sets of five. All right, so now the second set, we're bringing it up to about 185. I'm gonna hit a really clean single or double. I'm focusing a lot on bar speed here, so that slow, eccentric, and that explosive concentric is what I'm looking for here. I just wanna make sure that that concentric, that bar speed is fast on the way up. So some of you guys who are trying to develop some strength, I, I, I love five by five. It's just a very old school approach. So I think some of the most basic approaches are what works the, the best. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm doing five sets of five, but that's 25 total reps with 225 pounds. Set number four. I want to feel like I am trying to break that bar. That's helping me receive more lat engagement, pretty much. And um, it's allowing me to recruit a lot more in my forearms and my shoulders and even my chest. All right, so we just got through a good solid incline. Now we're gonna pick up the pace a lot. So our dumbbells only go up to 90 pounds with the power blocks. So um, rather than taking a lot of rest, we're gonna break it down a little bit. And I'm gonna try and get anywhere from three to four sets of 10. I might start with a lighter set and progressively increase, or I might just go to my weight and try and hold that for a period of time. There's no right or wrong there. So I think that last set with me was about 80 pounds. I'll probably take it up to 90. Try and hold that for another two sets. We're keeping your feet on the floor. Obviously, you're gonna keep much more of a stable base. The only time I'll ever put my feet up is if I feel like my ribs are starting to flare. Now, I'm not a power lifter, so I don't need to create that type of wedge that a power lifter would create in the, where they would utilize their lats on the press, okay? I am trying to use a lot more chest. So I'll do this set with my feet up and you'll see that the ribs slowly start coming down, but there's obviously a little bit of a risk there of losing balance. You've gotta be careful and make a good decision for yourself. So don't try this at home.
All right, so now we're moving away from the compound movements. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start a little bit on the lighter side and really just feel like I'm getting a good isolation out of my chest and then see how I'm feeling and then progressively go up. Whether I'm at a gym or whether I'm at my home, my workouts revolve around free weights. I mean, I just love dumbbells, barbell, kettlebells, bands. When I'm at home, 85 to 90% of my training, it's doing the stuff that we're doing right now. All right, so now we're gonna downshift from the workout a bit. So where we started with strength, we started going into hypertrophy, we're gonna add in a little bit more stability here. So you can go grab any band if you have access to a band. You do not need what I have right now. I prefer this, this is called a vector. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna do 10 presses with the right, 10 flies with the right, then 10 presses with the left, 10 flies with the left. Okay, not a heavy movement, just getting a good contraction. Crazy about doing these movements is you're not only feeling it differently up in the area, that's the primary mover, but my hips are engaging. My core is stabilizing. That's why I love these exercises so much. A lot of bang for your buck. It's a fun little uh, new exercise for a lot of you. I'd be really careful. If you don't feel incredibly comfortable with the push-up, do not do this. This is called an earthquake push-up. I'm using two bands because I weigh about 215 pounds, so that band's gonna fold if I only use one of them. I'm gonna go on a little bit of an elevation. I'm gonna pump my push-ups out like this, getting about 10 to 15 reps on all three sets. I'm not grinding, I'm just getting through them pretty clean. Understanding that that time under tension, that balance and stability is really what I'm looking for on this movement. So you never wanna see your hips moving during a push-up. Probably the most incorrect thing I see on most push-ups. I've seen individuals pressing with their upper body and their lower back arches and their hips stay down. Your push-up is a plank. You should be squeezing your glutes, creating tension with your entire body. So everything lowers and raises in one piece. So if you do wanna start experimenting with this, I would not try it off an elevation. Just keep your foot on the floor. Maybe have a workout partner get underneath you. Be safe, be careful. This is something that I would never have another client do. Maybe only one or two, to be honest. But this is something I like throwing in as a finishing movement. The amount of stability that's required out of my shoulders, though, is incredible. Hope you guys love this video. Um, of course, if you have any questions, fire them off in the comments below. Thanks, guys.